So, uh, it's now about 5.37, maybe, and uh, I'm going to call the um, public hearing to order. So, uh, this, uh, okay, so hopefully everybody's here to talk about our ARPA funds and how we're going to spend them, because that's the point. Uh, so, I just did a quick PowerPoint that isn't very well laid out, but anyway, <laughs> we just have some definitions so that ARPA um, is, is this the first slide? slide? Uh, ARPA is the American, yes. oh. yeah, there we go. So it's the American Rescue Plan Act um, from, and it has it established the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery plan, which gave about $200 million um, to municipalities in Vermont. Um, it was pretty recently that we got the final rule from U.S. Treasury on how these funds can be spent. Next slide, please. Um, so the, the big change with the final rule was that this, this change to um, allowing us to spend the ARPA funds on government services, which is very broad and um, basically allows us to spend it on most municipal services that you could imagine, infrastructure things, um, staffing, I mean, anything really, not, yeah, anything government service related. So, and in fact, I thought this was curious, um, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns analysis suggests that any municipality may choose to use their entire reward, award to replace lost revenue and you don't need to demonstrate the loss. So that's kind of how we get to the point where the money just kind of comes into the general fund, if you will. All right, so next, um, just to kind of frame the conversation and, and to think about things that we have going on, and this is where we hope to branch into discussion, is we have um, sewer plant upgrades that uh, we did put out to bid that came in uh, way over budget, and we were looking for uh, funds, the even spending all the ARPA funds on that project doesn't make that project whole. Uh, we have known for quite some time that we need a new town highway garage. Our town highway garage is... Um, 1972. 1972. It, uh, its main issues are... Uh, there have been issues with the roof leaking and um, so we contemplated fixing the roof, but there are posts in the building that hold the building up, and they are in between each bay for the trucks. And those bays are, the trucks have gotten bigger to a point where the bays are just too narrow. So they drive in, and there is no room for error. And the same front to back, they, when they drive in with the plow, from the back plow touches the back of the building, and um, you know some you, people can't necessarily walk behind the truck because it's that type. And are uh, there heat issues as well? Uh, we pumped a lot of heat in there in mm -hmm. recent years. So we had, there were heating issues. We added some propane heaters a couple years ago, which get the building warmed up, but all that heat really just goes out into the world. Um, it's not very efficient. We just pump a lot of heat Thanks leaky roof up even first. That's exactly <laughs> right. Uh, yes. Uh, there's the Judavine Library expansion, which many people are aware of, that also went out to bid, came in over bid, it worked to reduce the um, gap there, um, but that project still, you know, is going to go out to bid again, could likely use some funding. There's the Yellow Barn Business Accelerator, went out to bid, came back way over budget, needs some money, but, and again, this, the, our, even all the ARPA funds wouldn't come close to filling that hole. There's a swing bridge that we are working on um, to replace that failed, had a mechanical failure, one of the um, cables broke. Um, and we do, we were moving ahead on that pretty well for a while last summer. It got stalled um, for a while due to circumstances outside our control, but we think it's now moving again. Um, Opie's been working. Uh, with USDA to really get that project back on track. 
I, we don't know, but I suspect that that is also going to come in over budget. There's a fair amount yeah. of steel in that thing. Because we thought it was funded, but... We thought it was funded. It might be funded. All of these things come in higher. Everything's coming in higher when you actually bid it. There's the um, fiber internet expansion, which... Um, Paul Fix has actually come to talk to us about the community broadband, expanding community broadband. There's opportunity for the town to um, to uh, invest in that. The, this building that we're in, the Memorial Building, has a, it's a beautiful building with a beautiful slate roof that has been in need of repair for at least as long as I've been on the select board. A decade. Yeah. And um, and we'd need. Now, this is something that's probably more manageable. We just don't have quite enough set aside to do it. But maybe it's something where like a few thousand could be put toward that and make it happen. Uh, the townhouse has a project for accessibility, but also the roof needs. Um, yeah, the roof hasn't been addressed at all. The roof needs. And I'm sure there are lots of other things. So anyway, that's I guess at this point, I would like to open it up to um, input from folks who have come. You could just state your name for the record and comments or you know additions anything about this funding <laughs> I'm happy to jump. great <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, since our project was on the list already so Jody state your name I am Jody Lou Smith I'm the chair of the trustees for the Judah Vine library we have um, been working a number of years to put on an expansion and as Eric explained it came in well over budget. We're going out to bid again. We think we're funded, but again, we're expecting it will come in over budget. And so I'm trying to plan for that contingency. And one of our hopes or ideas is that the there is money for library capital projects coming through the state Department of Libraries, but that will be delayed. And so we may be able to have a pledge from that group, we're not sure, but we're, I'm looking to put in place some bridge funding, essentially, to be able to sign a contract and then hopefully not need those dollars if that library funding comes through. But at least until that comes through, we would need those dollars available. So that's... Do you have a timeline on when you're going to go out to bid and when bids will be due? Yeah, bids will be due middle of June. Okay. So contract signed middle of July. We may have more information on the state money by then. Okay. Um, I hope to. And I certainly will ask if they will pledge that money, even if they can't actually allocate it. Then I did speak to them. They're a nice fit for what their um, <coughs> mission guidance is, because especially around accessibility. Um, so. I don't have a good sense of what we need, and I don't have a good sense of what their grant range is going to be. Okay. So, I'm yeah, we're trying to yeah, juggle the pieces. So you're basically here to say we're still out there. We're still out there. We are, you know, sometime in the summer, likely to come and ask if there's a possibility for a bridge pledge or a commitment of some sort. We wouldn't need the dollars until we absolutely. Um, and if the bids come in way beyond, then we'll pull the plug. But we're hoping we'll reassess. They, yeah, we'll reassess. But okay. we're hoping they come in at a number that we can fill the gap. Okay. They're just going to keep going up. Okay. So we'll know about sorry mid June. You said. We'll know more mid June. Mid -June. We okay. should have the bids in by then. All right. That's the goal. Good. Yeah. All right. That's it for me. Others. Paul, can you say your name? I'm Paul Fix. I live here in Hardwick, and I'm a voter. Um, I'd like to start by asking the select board what the town has in mind as far as collecting ideas, and obviously this is a start, evaluating ideas, pricing them, working with the town to make them aware of what ideas are available, prioritizing them, and do we have a objective criteria for this process? And I guess I should have said first, this is a significant amount of money. I think I know how much Hardwick is receiving, 
But for the purpose of this <coughs> meeting, maybe you guys could state for the record how much money we're talking about so the public's aware. It's on the order of 850000 but I don't know the exact figure off the top of my head. It was like 822 or something. I think that's, that's the number I've heard. So, so this is a real uh, windfall for the town of Hardwick. And I think it's really critical that we have some objective criteria to evaluate this process. And so to the extent that you as a select board can guide decision making in the town, I think it would be very helpful for us all to know what opportunities there will be, you know, how they will be priced and evaluated, who will decide what percentage goes to what. So I just put that out there as something I think is important. So I think, um, just to respond briefly, I think that this meeting and the next meeting are, are you know, soliciting public input. I strongly suggest anybody who's interested to, uh, who's not here, or if you want to come again, to come again to our next uh, meeting, which is the 5th, is that right? Yes. Um, of May, and we'll do this again at 5.30. Um, and we really are, this is a, this, so I put up a list of projects that the select board's aware of, and this is like soliciting feedback on which of these projects do you think are valuable for spending this money, which other things have, are, are not up there that I've overlooked or that we haven't considered. And then I think, you know, ultimately the select board is going to decide how that money gets spent. It doesn't have to be spent right away. Um, and while it is a significant windfall for the town, I, I think that's absolutely true, but we're also in a time where um, projects are just coming back so much over budget that almost any one of those projects on that list could take the whole amount and still not fill the gap. So even though $850,000 seems like a lot of money, if we put all that money to the sewer plant, we're still not building the project we thought we could build for much, you know, I think rough, roughly we thought it was going to be a $2 million project and it's a $4 million project. Yeah. The other thing is we're going to see things like our paving this year. We're not going to get, I don't even want to guess, but maybe a right. third less. So that, for the money, you know, same with our gravel or sand. So, I mean, there's going to be a lot. There's still a operational it seems stuff. Seems like the windfall, but there's a lot. There's a lot of holes in the, what things cost today. So, I, I hope you don't hear my question in any way suggesting projects not be done. And I think you're right that a lot of them will go over budget. But it would, if something's a hundred thousand over budget, maybe this hundred thousand would be good to cover it. I, I don't yeah. that. But I think we need an objective criteria to evaluate what the projects would have been, how much they will be, <coughs> to find we some we just on the list. Right now we have this is the list. So if people yeah. have things to add that that's the first step is to see sure. what, what the list of projects is and then we can try to figure it out. Because we don't have an answer right now. And a lot of things we don't even know the price of yet. Like the swing bridge we don't know. The library we don't know. Like, we just don't know what, I mean, yeah. pricing is so volatile. Right. For parts of the Yellow Barn, the contractor was saying that the firmest bid they could get was a 10-day price on things. So anyway, these, mean, these meetings, are, we're trying to create the list of projects right now. Yeah, and I think... And we'll definitely have to look at how we're going to spend it at some point. But for right now, we're trying to just gather up the ideas of Thanks. what we should be thinking about. Well, going on with that. Oh, what's Norma, the can you state your name? Please? Oh, I'm Norma Spalding. Um, what's the timeline? Is there a time? There that is. Has to be spent? Um, well, it doesn't have to be spent in any. Uh, it does. I believe it needs to be allocated um, in. I'm sure, there is. There is. I can't remember. It's not very it's soon. Like it's like a year or something. Yeah, I, I think it's allocated in about a year, and I think we have another two years to spend years it. But don't quote me on that. But that's just roughly where we're at in the cycle. So we have a while. There's nothing. There's no urgency really to spend it. There's just you know we haven't. We're not deciding tonight. No. So just you know historically, before this final rule came out, there were very narrow categories that that looked like we could spend it, and so we were thinking there aren't really many choices. The sewer plant is the obvious project, but now 
there are a lot. It could be lots of things, and maybe some of it goes to the sewer project. Uh, maybe some of it goes somewhere else, and or multiple other places. Seems like one one way to think about getting the biggest bang for the buck is is plugging holes to get the most projects done. Right. Either either places where we could be the last dollar to get the project done, or places where it's a small thing that we don't have in our budget, but we could do the whole thing. Right. So. I'll just throw out because I don't see her here. Rachel Kane emailed me today, I think, and suggested one thing for our discussion is she'd really like to see some of those like flashing speed signs that give you speed feedback in East Hardwick on the hill where people go downhill and you know, and that's something that we've they're kind of expensive. Uh, I wanna say they're twelve. It depends on what type you get. But anyway, you get the yeah. that's the type of thing that's interesting to ponder too, because that's something that's not in our budget. And get a few of those. You can maybe get a few of those things, and you actually do that. Yeah. And get the most done. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so other other comments or ideas. Sally and Steve. Oops, yeah. sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, those are basically my questions. It's kind of hunt and gather meetings right now. Yep. And how long? Do we have before we need to spend money, and how are you going to make choices, and what were the projects that were already listed? That those were my basic questions, which you've answered. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Um, Gary Michaels, East Hardwick. Um, I'm actually here as in my capacity as a board member for the Crossberry Care Center, um, and and my question is, what whether and I, I think. I think you answered this over. You haven't established any criteria yet. So I was going to ask um, about uh, funding for nonprofits, if that's something that you may consider. Um, four C's are not in Hardwick, but Hardwickians represent uh, uh, the majority of our residents. And uh, we, like everybody else, have lots of projects, some of which relate specifically to uh, improved health aspects of the facility. I won't get into it. I won't go any more detail than that. We're way we're way early. Uh, it's just a stake in the ground for considering where you are with the nonprofits. Yeah. So I don't know that we had considered uh, non nonprofits. I, I, so I'll have to go back and look. I in the to just to me, my first blush response is that that probably doesn't fall under the general service, the governmental services umbrella maybe, but I do think I read something about being able to fund nonprofits, so I'd have to go back and look. Okay, the way I read that list was those enumerated services or put it in the general fund claiming loss of revenue, in which case it could be used for anything. Essentially. So, okay. right. Thank you. Yeah, so that's an, another interesting... Yeah. I have another um, thing that I've always wondered about, um, and that is heating this building. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's like really cold in the winter, as yeah. you guys know. And you've got, we've got a beautiful space out there that essentially in the winter you can't use because it's too cold. And, you know, with all the solar projects going on, it seems like this place could be retrofitted with heat pumps or something. Count clerk's, you know, the mm -hmm. count clerk's office could be heated better instead of having little electric heaters. Yeah. So anyway, that, yeah. so this building, I think. Yeah, it's a beautiful building. It's a beautiful yeah. building, but it's not being used. To its greatest uh, extent, yeah. It's so, a, we've got right. it, but we're not. Right, so that's a that's a great point. I think um, we, over the past years, have partnered with Efficiency Vermont to make improvements to this building. So there have been there's been improved insulation in the attic. Uh, we replaced the boilers for the heater, so they're more efficient. And but you're right, like we don't have any cooling in here. Um, it is. It's always going to be a stone building, I think. And so it's always going to be a bit challenging, but the idea of looking into, yeah, like a, a big heat pump, windows. It's stone well, building with big, big windows. windows. And they don't have storms. There are, there are no storm windows because that project know, never right? got finished. Yeah. We are back in the day. Yeah. 
Oh, you are? Yes. You know, oh, okay. right. I mean, it would be nice to be able, for groups to be able to use the space in the winter. In the winter, yep. Uh, and you really essentially can. And in the summer, it gets really hot. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... pumps would help solve some of that kind of problem. Yep. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that one out there. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a good thought to to do another take another look at this building for energy efficiency and perhaps other ways to heat and cool it. Yeah, or auxiliary methods for heating and cooling. It's a good idea. You're getting all this right, Amanda. Good. Because I'm not writing anything down. All right, other thoughts. Well, I, I guess I'd like to talk about the sewer plan. Yep. Uh, I know it's a big conversation, and I read uh, the Gazette reporting. I did not listen to your recent meetings, but I, I think there's a real question to ask about taking money designed to benefit the entire town and putting it towards the sewer plant, which directly benefits those people on the water and sewer system that have a separate means of funding them. And I understand that this, having a sewer plant benefits the entire town. I live in town now, so I would benefit from this. But as someone who lived in a more rural part of town, we had to deal with our own sewer plants. And there's not federal money to help those people. And they benefit the town, too, by not putting their sewage into the general environment by putting it into a septic system or whatever system. So I think there's a real question about putting more than, a, let's call it a fair share into the sewer system. I can certainly see trying to fund cost overruns in the same way we might fund cost overruns for the library or new town garage or whatever. But um, I just put that out there that I think that's a conversation that the entire town really needs to have. Sure. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a valid point. Um, I think that it, it's important to recognize, as you said, that the, the sewer system really does benefit the whole town because without it, we wouldn't have a lot of the businesses we have in town. We wouldn't have any businesses. Right. Well, you might have no, one would. or two. Well, it, yeah, it, so, yeah, it's a major it, reason why we have what we have. Right, the town. users, the users of the septic system pay for the usage of the septic system. The benefit of the sewer system benefits everyone in the town because the town wouldn't exist. The library wouldn't exist if we didn't have a sewer system. There would be no commerce. Haggard could not exist without a sewer system. So that's why it's important to the whole town. The users of the sewer system fund the usage of the sewer plant. We pay to, to operate that through a user fee. We're talking about a capital investment in the town for everybody in the town. And it's just silly for me for anyone to think that that sewer plant is critical to every single person in this town, including East Harvard. I, I think that's true. I, I would also add that those people in rural areas also fund the sidewalks and the street lights. So they're paying their fair share of that infrastructure in the town already. So I, I just, there, there are a lot of moving pieces here, and uh, I just yeah. Yeah, yeah. want to make sure we're recognizing that. Jody? I'm wondering if you've had any information around the infrastructure money that should be starting to flow at some point, because that bill passed. It's a very big bill. Um, as I understand, I think it's bigger than the ARPA bill, and I assume would be quite targeted to those projects. and. It's maybe a time right. issue. So if there so I don't the short answer is I really don't know, but the the more like wandering answer is that we have had discussions with our um, wastewater plant engineers, Aldrich and Elliott, who informed us that there yes, there's there should be infrastructure money coming that would help fund the sewer plant, but it's it's not well defined yet. So yeah, that's definitely something that we're taking into account with the whole sewer project is, well, there's, because the funding we had originally when we thought it was a $2 million project and we had this $2 million bond was uh, like a 40% um, subsidy on that $2 million. So that was, that was good, that was a good incentive, it was good 
good funding, um, but we don't know yet what the how that infrastructure money is. Hey, and we, could, we, we need that too. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we even need that we as well. Funding, we're, we're not funding the sewer right. project isn't funded, so we need the infrastructure money as well as. My yeah, suggestion was only that the infrastructure money might be more restricted than the ARPA funding. Yeah. And so yeah. targeting it to that if right. possible would be well, right. yeah, a strategy. Yeah. Technically it already is targeted to that whatever it comes in at. Whatever it comes in at, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that the yeah, and that sewer project is another one that needs to go out to bid again. Right. So and it's probably not gonna be less. I mean, it's yeah, it's not gonna be less, as we know. Nothing's gonna be less. I just have one more question. Could you explain what's happening with the swinging bridge? Sure. Um, so, uh, now so there's a little bit of funding. We thought we had lined up all the funding that we needed to do the project, and we had um, engaged um, a landscape architect and an engineer to work with us. We did a um, community they, input thing yeah. over by the Daniels building. <coughs> right. it was well was attended. Yeah. Right. And. Yeah. Um, and then we needed a contract signed with that group, with the, the um, architect and the engineer, to get the design in order to continue with like the permitting and stuff. So you need historic preservation, you need uh, the, the being in the river permit, the, you know, all these things, but you need the design first to show people this is what we intend to do. And we had a little bit of a stumbling, stumbling block um, trying to get <coughs> one of our funders to agree to sign the contract with that. So, so and the contract, the architect died. and what, sadly yeah. in the middle of it, the architect died. So, so, <laughs> so now we're a little bit back on track. So like I, I said earlier, opie has been meeting with um, some folks S -E. at SE Group yeah. for, uh, to, to try to come in and help with the design and working with USDA, who's now committed to getting contracts signed and getting the project back on track. And the SE Group is an architectural firm out of Burlington area, I guess. They, it's well, been national. all of the information and the stuff from our uh, public engagement process and the information that David Raphael had uh, based on ideas and design, the, that's all been passed on to them. So hopefully it all kind of but will come together sometime. So we had, I'm going to just throw really rough numbers out there, but we had lined up, I think, five or six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars com combining a bunch of sources. And that was based on an estimate we had that must have been almost two years ago. Study, it was yeah. quite a long time ago. Two years ago. And we got an estimate for just a real kind of a back of the napkin like if you went with a pretty standard design bridge you know it would be i can't remember it would the bridge it's, itself maybe was going to be three hundred thousand or something but then That's once you and then but then you need somebody to design it you need you're going to need the abutments rebuilt you're going to need permitting you're going to need the installation and so we figured about 600 and we thought we were good my guess is that in the current environment, it's not going to be enough. But we're moving forward. We're going to get a design, then we're going to get the permits, then we're going to get the thing out to bid, and then we'll see where we're at. Standard operating procedure for everything these days. Yeah. And then we'll put it out to bid again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if I could ask, at that public meeting, there were people who said, Let's do a basic inexpensive bridge. And there were people who said, oh, that one in that picture looks great. Yeah. How is the architect been given a charge from us as to what this bridge should come in, price-wise, design-wise, et cetera? Or do, is that still up in the air? So we're kind of. We I'm, haven't got an architect under contract yet. Right. We're you trying to get we don't have a contract. to work with us on it. We were at that point, right after that meeting, we were ready to sign that contract and get some, you know, have him do some designs. So you're yes. waiting to hear back from an architect once it's under contract with ideas and what prices might look like. Yeah. Good, thanks. Yeah. And ideally, there'd be alternate choices. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But we need, we, 
we were ready to do that in like August, and here we are. And it's 606. And it's 606. Yeah. Any, yeah. <laughs> any other final, final words on our, not final, because we can do this again in two weeks. Or three? Two. 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 Two weeks. Everyone's voting for two weeks. Yep. Is that right? The fifth. The 28th yep. is next week. Okay. The fifth is after that. Thank you for hosting this. Yeah, yeah thank you all for coming. Really appreciate it.